What's up guys and welcome back to my channel The Toll in Motion, a place for busy people and dream chasers looking to achieve their goals in a more efficient way. So today I'm going to do something a little bit different from my normal type of videos. If you're new here, welcome, 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 love to have you. I usually just bring out tips and tricks kind of videos on how to get the most out of your daily routines or the most out of your career or any kind of path that you have a goal for really. But today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to share my experience on something that um, I've kind of struggled with over the years, um, but I'm also working on at the moment. Um, and I, I know a lot of other people also probably struggle with this. So I just thought, let me just open up a little bit, be a little bit vulnerable, and hopefully it will help someone out there. So you probably guessed what it is, probably from the title of this video. It is basically um, dealing with imposter syndrome. Um, and more specifically for me, it's in the corporate world. So I'm gonna start off with basically what imposter syndrome is for those of you that might not know what it is. I've just got a definition here. So imposter syndrome is formally um, an internal experience of believing that you are not as competent as others perceive you to be. And I think that's a really, really holistic way to um, explain what it is. For me, it's kind of just the the fear of being caught out as being a fraud or also um, the fear of not truly believing that you belong to be in the environment that you find yourself in. That's how I've kind of experienced it over the years. So really, if I'm honest, going back to school days, um, I've always been a really, really confident really really confident girl um i've had lots of friends thank god great friends who have really built me up to be the kind of person that i am today i've always been easy walking into new situations in fact i invite myself into these situations even if they don't want me i'm gonna be there i love making new friends meeting new people and genuinely generally um I, I i get on quite well so growing up, I never really even knew imposter syndrome was a thing, didn't know it had a name, didn't experience any kind of anxiety when it came to new environments or new situations. But I feel like my first experience of imposter syndrome really was when I started to enter the world of work, um, corporate life. Um, and my first corporate role um, was at Samsung Electronics on my placement year at uni. And I think that's when it started to be, I started to feel things that I've never really felt before when it came to interacting with new people, being in a new environment. So imposter syndrome kind of um, reveals itself in different ways. Sometimes it's as small as just having a lack of confidence in what you're doing, or it could be, you know, you have a certain achievement, but you downplay it and make it seem as though, oh no, I didn't really do anything special there or that's just you know basic stuff don't really give me accolades for this or we can even grow into bigger things like constant anxiety and constant nervousness about being around or, or showing your talents or doing certain bits of work um which that then can really really affect um a lot of other areas of your life if it's not kind of dealt with and in my case specifically i feel like um when i do feel that way like oh okay what i'm doing is not good enough or i feel like a bit of a fraud for being where i am in the situation i'm in i try to overcompensate and and, and do way over and beyond what I'm supposed to be doing um, in order to kind of meet that perceived level of, you know, greatness that I'm supposed to be at. It could be really overwhelming because the truth of the matter is a lot of it is in your head. I think it stems from a lack of belief um, in yourself. So I might be doing everything right and everyone around me might be also thinking this. And that's why a lot of the time when people struggle with imposter syndrome, no one will know because actually you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're, you're, you're in a place where you're supposed to be but you don't believe it within yourself so you try to act you know you try to do more and more and more um to this level of perfectionism which you will never achieve and it just adds more anxiety until eventually you just break down um yeah i feel like that is definitely my experience 
but let me get into it a little bit more i do believe that imposter syndromes tend to pop up when you change your environment so like i said in secondary school confident kind of babe but now moving into um the work environment um i got a, a role in commercial strategy uh, at samsung like i said on my placement year um and really one i was the only black person there um, i work in the tech industry so um once again in terms of the male to female ratio that's also down and then three i just feel like sometimes in corporate life whereas i've kind of been brought up in london and kent primarily um around cl colloquial people just people them you know um moving and and in interacting with more like i would say posh or, or just people of a different lifestyle to me it, it made me really really conscious um that i'm not doing something wrong or i'm i'm doing the right thing so i, I felt like to a, an extent i could, really couldn't be the person i wanted to be so when the work started to load up and load up and load up um i always you know just always put so much pressure on myself like am i doing okay am i doing all right am i not doing all right am i just constant questioning and it becomes tiring after a while it really really does so yeah after you know being in an environment having to change the way in which you do things um especially because i feel as though um being black and being female in a tech industry you don't usually have people of the same similar characteristics as you working with you you feel like you have to act a certain way um and in and me acting differently to how i am um also made me or contributed to me feeling like a fraud in what i'm doing i'm here i don't really believe i belong here and now i'm trying to change the way in which i am and even doing that i feel more of a fraud it's just it's, it's a downward spiral setting that all apart then i graduated from university and started my first graduate role and i feel like this is when it really started to spiral um, i got a role as a trainee um a graduate project manager and i absolutely love being a project manager but once again i work in tech in it infrastructure at that time male dominated black people i can count on my hands the amount of women that i saw around doing a similar role to me other than like secretarial roles was like little to none um and i wouldn't say that it it completely you know is the sole factor for this coming in 100 percent no um but i do believe that when you can't see people like you around you um it does contribute also as a project manager i manage primarily old white men all the time which i love they actually bants especially the engineers got to love them but um once again it, being young as well it always made me feel like do these people respect me how can i always try to get respect from these people um how can i lead a team of people that are older than me i'm nigerian and in our culture generally like there's always this uh yes sir yes sir yes sir mentality in a corporate world that if that that yes sir needs to dip because in as much as you should respect everyone that you work with as a standard if you're in a in a leadership role which i am in um you've got to be able to lead with confidence believe in the people that you're working with but also make calls when they need to be called because you know the responsibility is on your head so it was also trying to balance like okay cool um how do i kind of transition from that yes sir mentality to uh, leading a team effectively i always just used to doubt myself i doubted myself into the ground and it made me more anxious more anxious and it and it is painful i think another thing that's also contributed upon reflection to all of this is um when i go for interviews i i i really or shall i say i used to really ask myself did i get here because i'm good enough or did i get here because i'm black young and a female and those are the the free buzz categories for companies to employ these days to make this you know equality um statuses um or status and all of that all of these things crazy it might seem to some people but to me it it's it's really really tough and the, and the thing is i know deep down inside 
I'm good enough, otherwise I wouldn't have got there. But because you know these policies for, you know, getting a certain quota of women or ethnic minorities or young people into the office is a thing, you start to always just question, you know, especially when things start to get tough um, in the role, as it would happen for everyone. There are tough times and, and good times for everyone. But you start to question, like, am I actually even good enough to do this? Or did they just put me here because, you know, they needed to. Anyway, um, that's kind of my experience of imposter syndrome. I'm still dealing with it, um, but I have definitely um, done some things to, to manage it. And also I feel like it's something that probably will never fully be eradicated, but it's also something that you need to take into your hands if you want to progress in life. You can't constantly have this cloud of doubt um, over you especially because that doubt might not even exist it might just be something that is in your head it's not justifiable um, but you've constantly got it um, and it's going to stop you from getting to the places you want to be if you feel like me I do empathize and, and do share your stories down below in the comments I would love to hear from you it's something like I said I'm still working on but um, I have a few tips that are working for me to help me to, you know, renew my mind and, and think differently about myself, especially in a corporate environment. And I hope it does help you. So I'm just going to get straight into those tips. So the first thing I really try to do when I'm feeling like imposter syndrome is, is creeping up and it's affecting me, it's affecting my mental um, state of mind is to really just build myself um, with affirmations. Remind myself that, you know, I'm great. God has said I'm great. That's, that's, that's it. Like anything else, any other noise that comes into your mind doesn't matter. Also, I really try to remember that God will never put me in a position that I shouldn't be in. I trust him enough that he won't put me somewhere that he hasn't got purpose for me. And resting in that kind of just is a bit of a fresh air to say, cool, you might feel a bit overwhelmed now, but one, it's temporary. It's never going to last forever. And two, God's always got your back. So um, as a Christian, building myself up in the scripture and really just trying to um, remember what God thinks of me rather than what I think of myself generally really really does help me another thing I like to do is to highlight my strengths so um imposter syndrome works really well in kind of telling you why you can't do something rather than preaching to you why you can do something and I feel like that's where we get it wrong that's where we tap into the negative energy when we should be po tapping in to positive energy so I always try to highlight my strengths so for example if I feel like I did a presentation and it went wrong instead of focusing on oh my gosh I'm gonna have to do another presentation I feel really really uh, anxious about it I highlight that oh Ira look relax you are an excellent communicator which i am you are an excellent leader you listen to people you understand how to take their their points on board you are really really good at critical thinking and thinking on your feet issue resolutions cool that's what you've got in the bag these other things i agree you know might be a little bit difficult but focus on this and this is the reason why you can do it instead of the reason why you can't do it. So definitely highlighting my strengths builds me up as well. Another thing I try to do um, is keep a record of my achievements because it's so easy to forget all the good things that you can do and instead just concentrate on that one thing that you couldn't do or that one thing that you failed at. One thing I started to do was every time I um, meet a deliverable or do something quite significant at work um i would write it down sorry i thought i had something on my lip <laughs> i would write it down just plain and simple just write it down so that um eventually when i'm feeling a bit low i go back to it and say cool remember the time you 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 conquered all these things remember the time that you did all of these things um it's important to write it down but also go back to kind of reaffirm yourself that you're still good you still got the source and that you are cool struggling with this right now but it won't last forever because you have the ability written down these are the facts don't listen to the lies from the devil these are the facts the facts are written down there's proof in the pudding that you're able 
to do this. Another key one for me is to also remember my position and, and what I'm meant to do. So if I'm feeling like I'm not doing enough, I try to do more and more and more and more. Listen, I had to come to a realization that I'm paid to do this. Stop doing this. Not that you shouldn't go over and beyond because I believe you should. Anything you want to do, do it excellently. But more of a don't make this your responsibility. If this is now the, the role of, of a director and I'm not at director level, don't make that your responsibility and then blame yourself when that is not done because it just adds on pressure. Make sure that everything that you're responsible for is excellent and that's where it that's where it stays um i feel like if you inflate your responsibility and then you're not able to um live up to it it will just add more anxiety so that's one thing that i'm i'm retraining my mind to do and then two more things that um i've learned to do is to build up my weaknesses imposter syndrome really plays on your weaknesses what you are not good at and in as much as you shouldn't focus on that you should definitely focus on your strengths by also strengthening your weaknesses so for example if it's writing reports go and do a course on report writing and become more confident in that the more confident you are in doing some of these things it will go a long 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 way in overcoming imposter syndrome because you'll be less nervous about that situation in the future and lastly then surrounding myself with people that also encourage me and see my value has helped tremendously i felt like in my old workplace um imposter syndrome would pop up a lot more than in this new workplace and the difference is because in this new workplace my boss is constantly saying you're doing a great job listen we're still on track for promotion i'm provoked i did i did he'd even I didn't provoke him and it's encouraging to see that people see your value um rather than when people are constantly like are you even doing what you're meant to be doing um where's this report where's that report you've done it to the best of your ability but no appreciation for your work so definitely be surrounded by people that will value you and I think it will go a long way it's definitely helped it's helped me a little bit all right guys so um that's it for this video i hope um these tips are will be helpful to somebody i don't know if you um struggle with imposter syndrome like i have you're not alone you're we're in this boat together so don't feel ashamed or don't feel as though you can't talk about it but it is our responsibility to try to manage it and do better in the future once again if you do struggle with imposter syndrome please do you know like this video and also drop a comment down below share this video because you might not uh, struggle with imposter syndrome but someone else that you do might and it will be useful to hear a, a, another person's perspective let's talk let's let's see you know if we can help each other out and yeah until then guys remember to subscribe remember to like this video and i'll see you in the next one